Hi, this is Matt from Tradesman Digital Marketing. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through responsive search ads, how to set them up, what they are, and the best, best practices for them. Uh, responsive search ads are essentially taking over Google ads. There's no more expanded text ads. There's no uh, real other ads when it comes to search. These are the ads and the way of the future. So you might as well get used to using them. First off, what is a responsive search ad? Responsive search ads are ads essentially that have a whole bunch of headlines and a whole bunch of descriptions and they rotate. And Google then figures out the best combination for them and uses that ad for your customers with the highest click through rate so you get the best results. That's what a responsive search ad is. It's just a, an ad with a whole bunch of headlines that circulate with a whole bunch of descriptions that circulate. And then Google comes up with the best combo and uses that for your uh, campaign. They're pretty simple. Uh, I like them. They used to be not recommended by a lot of companies and we didn't use them either, uh, specifically because Google's AI really wasn't that good at figuring out what worked. And over the years, as Google AI has gotten better, responsive search ads are just you know the gold standard now. This is what everyone uses. Uh, as you can see, even here, they're giving the warning that expanded text ads, which were essentially just you know one text ad, which was like two headlines and two descriptions, and that was it. And you had to manually go in and test everything for a better click-through rate. Those are going the way of the dinosaurs because Google wants to make this as easy as possible for you. If you just blast a whole bunch of headlines and a whole bunch of descriptions, chances are one of the combinations will stick and uh, you'll experience better results with Google Ads. So that's essentially what's going on with the responsive search ads. They're taking over. Google wants to give you as many opportunities to do well as possible, and I think that's the best way to go about it. Again, like I said, uh, responsive search ads used to be look poorly upon just because uh, Google's AI wasn't really good at, at determining uh, what was the best for your campaign, but now Google, Google's AI has gotten a lot better, and. Uh, I like them, I think they're fantastic, and that's what we use. Uh, we see incredible results with them. That being said, uh, let's go into actually running and changing a responsive search ad. So what do we do? We click on our campaign, we go to our ad group, uh, the one we want to add our AI, <laughs> our responsive search ad, also known as an RSA2. We click ads and extension, we hit ads, and then this is our responsive search ad. So as you can see here, it's not, uh, it's not eligible right now just because the campaign's pod, the, paused. This is our demo account, so we don't actually use this. This is just for testing stuff. Once this pops up, okay, as you can see here, there's a few elements that you have to take uh, in mind. First off is the actual final URL. Where are you going to be sending this traffic to? What website? For this account, we found just a random company, Title Pools. They install pools and we sent the traffic to their website. Normally when you're using Google Ads and service-based businesses, you want to send them to a dedicated landing page. This gives you a better conversion rate and it just produces more leads. Everything's much better and simpler when you use dedicated landing pages. Uh, that being said, you have to be sure this is where you want the traffic to go to because if you send them to the wrong place uh, that's not going to be good <laughs> so make sure your URL is correct and Google Ads has seen that and it's doing well the next thing is the actual display path so this is actually what pops up and what users can see um, when you actually use a URL it takes the actual domain so titlepools.ca is the actual domain uh, and then it allows you to add two uh, paths after it so you want to make this as relevant to the customer as possible uh, for this ad group, I think we did, what did we do? Fiberglass pools. So we did fiberglass pools installation. This is really relevant to the customer's problem. Is it gonna make a big difference? No, not really, but it makes it look like you're a little bit more professional and most companies are gonna take the time to actually do that. Uh, and it just gives you that little bit more of an edge. And I recommend making it look as relevant to the customer's problem as possible. And if someone's looking for fiberglass pool installation and they see a link that says fiberglass pool installation, they're just a little bit more likely to click on it as compared to your competition. And it gives you a nice little edge. Uh, that being said, the next thing is for optimal ad performance, include these words in your headlines. Uh, this is essentially Google's AI trying its best attempt at making sure your ad copy is gonna be relevant to your customer's problem. They wanna see those keywords in your actual headlines. And most of the time we want a score of excellent or at least good uh, before we run an ad. Uh, this is just because Google really likes seeing keywords in the titles. Uh, and if someone types in fiberglass pools, chances are they want to see ad copy with fiberglass pools in it. Uh, this is just because it's really relevant to the problem and they're more likely to click on it, which means you're more likely to get a lead, which makes means you're more likely to make money. So uh, yeah, I highly recommend looking at what Google says. If it says, you know, add more headlines, include popular keywords, really take this into consideration and look at it before uh, going ahead. That being said, now we have a whole bunch of headlines to choose from and uh, 
for these, I recommend maxing them out, putting 15 out of 15 headlines. Don't put two or three. Please max this out. Put as many headlines as possible because the more headlines you put, the more um, Google's AI can test this out, figure out which headline works best for you, and figure out better results for you. So the more, the merrier in this case. Now, when coming up with ad copy for headlines, you really want to look at one, uh, the name of your company. We always put that in there. It's not always a really big thing. Sometimes Google doesn't even choose to show it, uh, but it is nice having the name of your company in there. Just if you have any brand awareness or anything like that, it really does help. Uh, but the next thing is the actual keyword. We always put the keyword in one of the headlines. Always, always, always. Uh, we do not um, you know, opt out of that. We always put that in there just because we want it to make it look relevant and Google really likes that and it seems to give a boost when it comes to the actual click-through rate and uh, relevancy to the customer's problem. Now other things to consider when doing ad copy. This is where you really have to get creative. One is we want to be as relevant to the customer's problem as possible. So say they want fiberglass pool installation. We already put that here. But we could put in, you know, looking to build a backyard pool, looking um, for fiberglass pools in your area, looking for local fiberglass pool installers, stuff like that that really resonates with the customer and it makes them feel like, oh my God, this person knows exactly what I want. And um, they're really like reading our mind. You kind of want them to think that like, oh, this person knows exactly what we're about. Uh, and the more you can resonate with, the more likely they are to click on your ad. That being said, another thing you really want to add in is reasons why they should click you. Do not put, we are the best company, please pick us. That is not going to get you clicks. You need to give them reasons as to why they should click on you. If they're looking for pool installation, you have a headline that says looking for pool installation. Um, we have two year warranties and you can get a free assessment right now. These are reasons why people would click on your ad. Do, make sure it's related to the customer's problem. Please, please, please do not boast about yourself and what and how great your company is because no one really cares. They care about their own problem. If you can solve their own problem, chances are you're gonna get a lot of leads and your account is gonna be very successful. A location is a great uh, one. So right here, I have GTA pool installation. GTA stands for Greater Toronto Area. We're in Canada. Toronto is a city right near us, and the Greater Toronto Area is the area around it. So if you had like New York City pool installation, that's another great thing to add in there. Anything relevant to the location uh, is a good thing because it makes it, the customer feel like it's very precise to their individual problem. Um, you want to also add a whole bunch of call to actions in here. I like putting four, five, six uh, in here. Get a free estimate. Uh, schedule a free assessment today. Call to call right now. Stuff like that, uh, or get a quote right now. These all help build and create a atmosphere where the customer can click on your ad and be like, "Okay, I know what I'm going to get at the end of this." They know our problem. They, I can trust them because they have like certified warranties or you know two-year warranty or whatever it is, certified award-winning. Um, pools, whatever it is, and then the call to action at the end of it. So you want identify your customer's problem, give them a reason to pick you. So maybe it's to your warranty, maybe it's certified in installation uh, to whatever it is, and then a call to action. What do you want them to do? Click on this ad and you can call us today, get a free assessment today, uh, you know, whatever it is. Once you kind of follow this formula, your ads are going to start looking a lot better. You're going to get a much higher click through rate. And this is kind of the formula we follow. Uh, again, Google's going to circulate all this. And once it starts doing that, chances are you're going to have a winning ad somewhere along the line because there's just so many variables and one of them is going to stick. And uh, this is what we do for great results. So I would re recommend following that formula of identifying the customer's problem, giving them a reason to buy, and then having a call to action. So whatever you want them to do, is it call you, is it schedule a free assessment, is it email you? That's a great way of going about it. Now for descriptions, descriptions are really important. Again, put four out of four here, don't put two out of four like I did here, this is, again, demo account. Um, what we do with descriptions is we go further in depth with the reasons to buy. So you could have award-winning, certified installers, two-year warranty, uh, you know, hundreds of happy clients, uh, you can get an instant quote now, just more reasons, 20 years of experience, stuff like that. Uh, I don't really love the 20 years experience, but we did put it in there just to, you know, test it. You never know it could work. Um, but this just goes further in depth into the customer's problem and why they should buy from you. And you could even put like, uh, looking for a brand new pool. We have award-winning pools. We have certified installers. We have a two-year warranty and that would look and sound great to a customer who was looking to install a new pool. So that's what we would do in terms of description. Again, go further in depth, uh, more so than a headline.
Now for ad URLs, you don't really have to worry about this unless you're actually doing tracking templates, which really isn't all that relevant to most service-based businesses. So I'm just gonna skip that for now. Um, for extensions, if you do not have campaign extensions, you wanna do every single ad as its own extensions, you can. You can have a call extension, you can have a call out extension, you can have a site like extension. All of these things are super valuable. I generally set them up at the ad group or campaign level and just because it's easier that way and I don't have to go back into every single extension set it up again. Uh, that's what we recommend doing. Also, there's always more extensions down here. Uh, for search ad extensions, we normally use SiteLink, Callout, call extensions, we use structured snippet extensions, we don't use apps. Uh, we can use lead forms sometimes depending on what the customer wants. Uh, promotion extensions, we don't love promotions just because generally the leads you get from there, people are looking for a deal or a discount and that's not generally the clientele we want for our customers. Most of our customers are high end and they don't really offer all that many deals because they know what they're worth. Uh, the next thing is price extensions. If you're selling, um, you know, things that are really based on pricing or even promotions, this is a really good tie in with pricing. Uh, you could use price extensions, you can use promotions. Uh, those are two very excellent things. Once you have your ad set up and this says excellent or good, uh, you can preview over here, look through all of the different combos Google Ads has. You can view it as a on your laptop or computer or your phone. Uh, this is just a nice way to preview it and understand what it's going to look like to the customer. Uh, once you have all of this set up, also, by the way, you can see up here your keywords in the actual ad group. This is nice. And the ad group, uh, in terms of what ad group this ad will actually belong to. Once we have all this set up, we can then hit save ad. And now our ad is saved and it would be good to run uh, inside Google ads. That's responsive search ads in a nutshell. They're very awesome. They produce excellent results. They used to be not not so much uh, in terms of you know reliability because Google w wasn't doing a really good job at uh, optimizing them, but now they are awesome. I love them and I, this is what we use for our company. Uh, time and time again, we are shocked by the results we get with such high click-through rates and I recommend for almost any service-based business to be using these. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'd be happy to answer them. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day and take care.